Welcome to the Barker Podcast Collection. I suck, you suck, I suck at Call of Duty. Welcome to the Not Playing Podcast. My name's Rob Howard, and this week I'm joined by... Ian Bruce. And Patrick Kay. Do you want to tell us about anything you've been playing on the vibe then, Pat? Oh, God, I've been playing everything. Right, uh, so I've been playing some room scale Minecraft. Uh, using oh, right, cool. uh, the Vivecraft mod. That's amazing. Um, Certainly so, wouldn't be the official one, would it? <laughs> no, no. Uh, I've tried... I've, because I played it on the Rift as well with uh, um, uh, Minecraft, which I think is made by the same same guy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, um, and basically the Vive version just lets you like teleport around, and um, you can you have your your hands and your tools are represented obviously by the the controllers. <coughs> and it, yeah, it works works really well, and it's. Uh, it, it's like definitely like a, a cool like experiential thing like because you can load other people's maps um, and oh, nice. it, so you can do like the Westeros one and stuff like that and um, uh, like you know the Blade Runner esque kind of cyberpunk city and stuff so it's it's really cool there's lots of like content for it already that you can just kind of load up um, I've been playing um a ton of a game called Zenblade, which oh, is yeah. like, uh, which is basically Fruit Ninja, but in VR. Wow! Uh, and that's so basically you're in a dojo and you have um, uh, you've got um, just basically fruit being thrown <clears throat> towards your face, <laughs> and and bombs as well. And it's exactly the same as Fruit Ninja. You've got to hit the fruit and avoid the bombs. Um, you have to hit it with the, the sharp side of the blade, so you can't hit it with the, the, the edge of the blade, or it'll just kind of bonk and and hit the fruit off to the side. But you can use that to deflect bombs, um, so you can do cool ninja stuff where you move bombs, flick bombs, sort of lightly out of the way and swipe through the through the fruit. But yeah, it's it's awesome, and it's um they they are actually making fruit ninja um fruit ninja game for it. Oh right. Um, but from from what I've seen from the official one, it doesn't look as good as Zenblade. Uh, Zenblade has got a very kind of like realistic looking aesthetic. It's set in a dojo uh, with just a just a blade, and it's kind of quite realistic looking objects moving towards you. Whereas the the, the uh, uh, Fruit Ninja one is very very bright and cartoony and colourful, and it looks like it's going to be really hard to concentrate. But probably both will be good in in their own in their own right, I guess. But um, yeah, yeah the uh, the official one looks like it's got more of a garish background. I don't know why they decided to make that kind choice. Of, yeah, kind of cartoony and bright. And, yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's 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 really really cool. It's so much fun. It's um, it's enormously satisfying to get combos to swipe to like five pieces of fruit in one go and stuff like that. It's, it feels really really good. Um, they've been updating it really regularly. Um, there's a leaderboard, so everyone's kind of competing. Uh, which is really really cool, and it, it's it's very similar to Hollow Point in that it's like a huge amount of replayability. It's like it's a it's like a casual game that you just drop in for five minutes or ten minutes. Although you, I have found myself playing it for like a couple of hours at a time, a cup like a few times. So and it's exhausting when you do it for like for that one, but it, it is a lot of fun. I tried um, this on the I tried this on the Connect. They 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 brought it to that as well, uh, and and that was quite neat because you could move use your feet as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. In in, in Denblade, you're sort of darting around in the in the dojo because it will come from the left side and the right, so you have to kind of move around a, a bit as well. So there's, there there is a bit of kind of walking about in there, in there as well. But yeah, it's it's just a lot of fun. It's just it's just tons of fun basically. Um, so I've been playing that, and the similar thing, uh, Lightblade VR, which is um, is basically just a, 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 a light light 
Saber Simulator. Um, you're basically on this on the deck of a on a of a spaceship, and you've got this little droid that's firing blasters at you. You've just got to deflect them with your your lightsabers. Um, but it just feels awesome because they're lightsabers, and you can switch them on and off, and they make all the right sounds and stuff. Um, I I bought it because it was like a couple of quid, and I was like, this is pretty good. I don't even know if this will still be up there in a couple of days' time. So. Um, but thankfully, uh, it doesn't seem like uh, Disney have got involved. Um, no. But um, yeah, other than that, Warts of the Wizard, which is a cool like um, Harry Potter a, simulator. Yeah, it's it's, it's very <laughs> it's very much like a a high end AAA tech de- de- tech demo. Um, it it's um, very kind of like well, it, it's. It's, it's enormously kind of visceral and it's got so, so, so much colour and, and light involved but basically what you're in the, this wizard's tower and you have these, these ingredients and you have to drop them into your, your cauldron and you're basically different combinations will make different spells so by trial and error you drop these things in and then uh, you know a load of uh, spell stuff comes out and, and um, yeah it's really really cool so like one of the spells uh, is the puppeteer, and you can pick up any object in the room, and you can just move it about with your hands, um, and and it will remember that movement, and then it will it will repeat it once you let go. Um, okay. So there's like an xylophone in there. If you pick up the the beaters and you play, you use that spell and you play the beaters and you play a melody, it will then play that melody back to you when you let go of it. It's like it's very cool, very magic, um, and and uh, like a, the coolest one is um, the the conductor, which allows you to just basically grab all of the objects in the room and it throws them up sort of like kind of using the force in uh um in, in star wars in, in yeah i was trying to think what was the, uh, oh, the, force, the unleashed. Thing, force unleashed yeah where it's very kind of overpowered and but basically you as you move your hands around your head or your body that makes the object swing around the room and it feels so connected it feels it does really feel like you're pulling these 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 kind of chairs and furniture and stuff around the room as you move your hands around your body. If that makes sense, I'm doing ah, these cool. waving motions in the in the air that you can't see, but <laughs> I can but imagine. I can, can I'm imagine. looking at the video as well, so I can sort of yeah. But, but no, it um, looks yeah, cool. It's yeah, that is it's amazing, and it's got low. It's one of those things you just have to play it, and you find more and more the more times you play it. Um, it had lots of different elements where it kind of teleported you or changed your scale, made you really big. Or um, it, at one point, it puts you in a labyrinth and it plays with shadows and light. And it's yeah, it's it's absolutely mint. People are people are asking how they can like throw money at the developers because it's it's a free app, but it's it's, yeah, it's become yeah. a lot of people's sort of favourite VR experiences. Um, but yeah, that's cool. for, for actual games. Um, I have also been playing Hordes, um, which is mint. It's it's basically a super arcadey first person shooter. Um, it's uh, post apocalyptic zombies, you know, very generic. Um, but basically, you move through kind of very like a lot like um, Time Crisis um, okay. or House of the Dead. So it's, it's on rails and you, all these kind of waves of enemies are coming at you and you've got various weapons, you've got shotguns and um, kind of assault rifles, <coughs> pistols, grenades. Um, and you, it, it's just super arcadey, but it's just pure fun. It's not too scary that you know how, but it, it's, it's, it's kind of, it, it's enough of incentive. You, you just want to keep stuff away from you. Like when stuff gets up in your close, it's, it is pretty fucking scary, but, but, for most of the time, it's just just a really good, fun, dark arcade game. Do they get, um, how far? How close do they get to you? Because I know oh, they get right up in your face. Really, if, if you don't kill them in time, yeah. Because I noticed um, on uh, some of the things they were showing at E3 <clears throat> that um, it seemed like they 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 stopped kind of an artificially, <laughs> you know, arbitrary distance from you so as to not get completely in your face. Oh no, they they get right <clears throat> up in your face eventually if you, right. if you don't kill them. Um, but you you don't want to get them to get that place. It's, it's no. pretty horrible. But yeah, like it, it, it's it's such a good fun. And there's there's loads of different levels, very different environments in each one. Um, and again, there's a lot of incentive to sort of beat your score. And there's lots of replayability. I've played the same single, like I think it's the fourth level, 
I've unlocked all the levels, but I played the fourth level like probably ten times more than all the others. Right. Uh, which is the daytime one. I guess it's probably because it's a little bit less scary. Bit less but, scary, um, yeah. But yeah, it's 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 so well, it's not daytime actually. It's kind of evening, but it is lighter and it's outside. Um, yeah. So it feels a little bit less claustrophobic, I think, actually. But yeah, it's yeah, good fun. And also another thing which is very different is Pool Nation VR, um, yeah. which is <coughs> is it's a bit of a gem and it's a bit of a surprise. It's a it's a it's a bit of an un, unexpected thing. I think I don't think lots of I don't think a lot of people sort of saw that something like this was coming or or as quickly as it has. Basically, it's a social sandbox. Do you remember like when, do you remember a while ago, like Oculus was showing off for those kind of uh, multiplayer experiences um, that, was, that were kind of like uh, like a toy box? Yeah, it was called and Toy Box, wasn't it? It was called Toy Box. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, it was kind of just about pe- two people being in the room together and interacting and mucking about. Well, Pool Nation VR is kind of like a physics social sandbox with the theme of pool, of playing pool. So you're in this like super re- well rendered bar. Um, there's cool music playing in, on the jukebox. There's like videos playing in the background. Apparently they're going to be editable so you can play your own music and, and videos in the future. I can't see that going wrong at all. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> there's, um, yeah, but basically it forces you to hang out with someone on the other side of the world normally so it's, it's really 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 cool uh, the, my very first game felt a bit, little bit awkward um, because of that so like so obviously you have a head avatar that's floating about and it's completely abstract it, it looks like a like a HMD and you have hands which are again like just the HMD controllers I think or or there's some sort of like kind of holographic robot hands I think as you see <coughs> on other players but that those sort of three points of, of kind of body language communication. If you imagine like putting a sheet over <coughs> someone and like all you can see is their hands and their head. Right. Do you know what I mean? That is kind of yeah. the, the kind of level of communication of, of body language with, with, with the sort of thing. Um, so it's like E.T. E- 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 down the pub. E.T. <laughs> down the pub with a big cowboy hat on or a big Viking hat on. Like you unlock hats and stuff as you as you win games, but um, yeah, basically you're in this weird sandbox. There's not weird sandbox at all. It's completely kind of realistic and like um, you know believable looking physics sandbox. Playing a game of pool, the the physics on the actual game itself is spot on. It's excellent. Like basic how it works is you with your left or your front hand basically you put it down. As you would do in, in the in the normal game, you then pull the trigger, and when you're pulling that trigger, it freezes its location in the, in the scene. So it's like you've basically put it down and rested. So if you move it even microscopically, it won't it won't register. It, right. It, it, it's held in place when you hold that trigger down. Then with your back hand, you you take the shot just as you would, and it feels you know exactly how to do it. Everyone who's played pool knows how to play this game, um, and you. You, uh, you you immediately kind of it feels like pull is what I'm trying to say so you can do trick shots you can make you can make the ball kind of like do that thing where it cur- curls back to you or you can make it jump over the, the ball in front of it and hit the balls behind it <coughs> you can knock it all the way off the table and smash bottles you can pick up <laughs> bottles and smash them on the wall you can throw chairs at the other player um, I was fr- I was throwing I was throwing a chair at this American player as, you as, as he was taking his shot. Um, I was behind the bar pulling like pulling uh, pints and, and just like chucking stuff around. So yeah, right. it's a load of fun. Like you can play darts as well. But basically, um, when, once you kind of sort of learn all the things you can do with that, you, and you actually get down to playing the game of pool, it works perfectly as the game of pool. But it's it's mainly a social game. It's basically about Putting you in the room with a, with another person, um, and it, and it's 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 a very rare thing. Hover junkers shows you a little bit, but you're too busy killing each other to notice it. Um, yeah. Not not all of the servers in, in hover junkers are chatty. You can normally make them chatty if you start talking, but I think the default most people are 
most people are just killing each other. Um, so you, you don't sort of see the, how that that kind of experience but when you get someone on your hover junker that that always kind of communicates it because even if you're not talking to each other you have this real close body language together that that, that it, 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 it's it's basically a new thing is what i'm trying to say it's it's something that's that we haven't had before and it, it's it's like an amazingly cool thing uh in in gaming um uh, so yeah poor nation vr uh, was was uh, absolutely blew my mind um and can I, <laughs> sorry, I know I've blazed through a bunch of games, but can I mention just one more game? Yeah, go for it. Um, which is Out of Ammo. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is absolutely cracking. So Out of Ammo is an RTS. It's, it's, the, first, uh, it's the first VR RTS, I think ever but it's certainly the first i've ever played but oh yeah i've seen this on eurogamer yeah where you zoom into the dude that's right yeah it, it's it's really low poly it's very basic looking uh when you get to the later levels you see exactly why it has to be like that but basically um you uh you, you're you're waist deep in the landscape and you're you 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 it, it, they say it's an RTS, but in a way, it's kind of like a tower defense game. Yeah, there is there is strategy involved as, as well, but it's more, I think, like a, a tower defense game. And so, basically, you put down your men, you put down your 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 barricades, you put up your sniper towers, you place down. Oh God, yeah, you place down your your um your <laughs> your uh, mounted cannons your mounted guns like heavy guns but right. Jesus Christ that is the best thing I've, one of the best things I've done in VR is that looks this gun awesome <clears throat> it, you you so with with the normal ones it, with the normal like when you take control of the like the um, the gunner like the, the the normal sort of assault rifle gunner it's just like every, every other kind of first person you just kind of shoot and it's you know it's, it's standard but when you Go into that. You when you pick up that um, that mounted gun, you you grip it with both the grip buttons on both controllers <laughs> to, to hold it. And yeah. once you're doing that, it take it. You control it by just moving your hands around, like exactly as you would. Nice. And yeah. then you pull the triggers to fire it. And when you pull the triggers, the the thing just vibrates, obviously in full settings, and it just feels amazing. Cool. Just mowing down all of these enemy soldiers, and it's it's super cartoony, so that the violence doesn't feel like massively distasteful. It it, it does feel a bit kind of not silly. I mean, it's massively kind of rewarding when you when you kind of fire a rocket at a, at a tank and take it out, or you. But do you know what I mean? It, it's not like a, it doesn't feel dark in any way because it's yeah. it's super cartoony graphics. It's like um, cannon fodder. It's, yeah, it's a lot like cannon fodder, like super cartoony and like very bright and stuff. And there's lots of different environments. So there's like desert ones and like, um, just uh, mountains. And there's a D-Day one where you're mainly just having them coming in from the the, the beach. Um, so yeah, it, it's awesome. It's such good fun. It's like, I can see there's a lot of things you play that you you think oh this is going to get ripped off and I think a lot of people would make this kind of game because um, it's it, it's it can it has quite deep gameplay in that there's a lot of strategy involved that you have to learn how 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 to place things and where to place them um, but you will find yourself wanting to to play the same levels over and over and over again, um, and those games, I think, they they generally do quite well. And I, this has been doing incredibly well. It's been getting lots of uh, updates with content as well. I actually, I actually took the. I was going to wait a bit on this one, but I took the plunge because they said they're actually going to up it in price. It's about ten quid now. I think they're moving up to about fifteen because they're adding co-op multiplayer co-op, um, and they're adding a lot more content in the future. So. Um, they said that so obviously as it's going to be t getting so much kind of support um, in, the, in the future they, they're going to be asking for, for more money for it but honestly it's, it'll probably be worth it at that price now it, it's 
such a good game. Anyway, I'll shut up, man. You can talk about what you played. No, I, I was just going to say I, I, they could um, like apply something like the Toy Soldiers license to something like this. Or, or... Um, yeah, that's that, that's very much what it. Yeah, you you know that that's very much what it feels like. It feels like playing with like toy soldiers and toy helicopters and that. Yeah, that is what it feels like. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm sure someone will do something. Cool. This has been the Not Playing Podcast in partnership with notlistening.co.uk where you can also hear myself and Ian talk about movies and TV on the Not Watching Podcast and Adam, Ash and Will talk about all manner of funny things on the Not Listening Podcast. You can email us at notplayingpodcast at gmail.com or you can tweet at or follow us on Twitter at notplayingpod. You can find the show notes for this show at notlistening.co.uk and if you're listening to us on iTunes then please do give us a review. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for listening. See ya. Goodbye. My friend, I'm in, but you agree, cause I suck, you suck, I suck at